In this video, we're going to talk about the cervix, which is part of the female reproductive tract situated in the woman's pelvis. The uterus is central in the reproductive tract and is connected to the fallopian tubes either side. Next to the fallopian tubes are the two ovaries, which can be seen here. The vagina connects the uterus to the outside and the lowest part of the uterus which projects into the vagina is called the cervix. So let's zoom in on this area now and this is what we can see. And just to orientate yourself, we have the vagina here, the orange area. This area here represents the main part of the cervix with a bit that projects into the vagina called the portio vaginalis. The lining of the outside of the cervix, or ectocervix, is lined by hard flat cells called squamous cells. The lining of the inside of the cervix, also called the endocervix, is lined by large mushy columnar cells. And where they meet, this is called the squamo-columnar junction. And this is what it looks like in real life, with the whiter cells on the outside, squamous, and the red cells, columnar. During puberty and adolescence, the cervix enlarges and alters shape in response to hormones from the ovaries. During this process, there is an inversion of the endocervix, which results in columnar cells being present on the ectocervix, as can be seen here. Cells naturally die and reform. And as the columnar cells projecting into the vagina die, they are replaced. But due to the acid environment of the vagina, they are replaced by squamous cells, not columnar cells. And this process is called metaplasia, and it forms something called the transformation zone. To complete the story, after the menopause, ovarian hormone levels fall and the transformation zone regresses into the cervical canal. In our next videos, we'll learn about the causes of abnormal smears and what happens during a colposcopy.